Hey guys, Moplox here, and thank you for clicking on that video in advance, and if you're new, welcome, and if you're old, thanks so much for sticking around. I've decided to make this video a top 20 facts because, honestly, you guys are just way too good to me. We went from 25,000 subscribers to 26,500 overnight, basically, and the last timeline video received so much awesome feedback and over 2,500 likes, and it's almost at 3,000 now, and that's just insane. That's never happened to me before, so thank you guys so much. Let's get the countdown started. Number 20. Okay, guys, let's start number 20 outright. This should probably be number one, but I don't feel like waiting to talk about it, and I'm not going to make you wait either. I do believe I have literally found the oldest RuneScape classic picture ever. Here it is. You can see that magic was good magic and evil magic. The crafting skill was known as tailoring. Prayer was known as influence, and prayer was also known at the same time as pray good and pray evil. And there was a hiding level thingy within the equipment stats, so apparently you could hide from monsters or something like that, I don't really know. And the report abuse button did not exist yet. Guys, rune armor wasn't even out during this picture yet. I was so amazed to actually be able to find this. Definitely let me know what you think about this picture in the comments section. Number 19. Back in the olden days of mining in the earliest stages of RuneScape Classic, you could literally end up getting normal rocks by accident when mining, having the chat box state that a few lumps of uninteresting rock break off. Number 18. Along with the last two oldest living pictures of RuneScape Classic, max cash was actually set to 65,535 coins, and even if you got this much, you could still continue another pile of it, whereas today, if you got max cash, you literally couldn't hold another coin after that. Number 17. The trees back in RuneScape in 2004 were slightly different than how they look today. For example, regular tree trunks were more darkish brown instead of light brown like they are now, and willows didn't have the greenish overlay effect that they have now. Instead, they looked more like a normal willow tree. Number 16. This animated advertisement right here that you guys are seeing was in fact a popular notification on the RuneScape website shortly after the RS2 beta was released. It was posted due to the recent macroing issues and hijacking of fan sites during this time. Number 15. Party hats in RuneScape Classic are not defined as having any specific color like today's are. They are simply just named Party Hat. Number 14. Okay, so some of you guys know this and some don't. Falador used to be gray instead of being white during 2004 and early 2005. It was at this time also that Falador was much more populated within the merchanting world, and to give you guys an example of just how popular it was, check out this picture. Even near the Falador East Bank, people are piled around it. Number 13. Along with the old Falador being gray during 2004, Barbarian Village was also different. Instead of being mostly brown and having mining rocks in the middle of it, there was just one big wooden, uh, whatever this thing is. It was in the middle of Barbarian Village. It's, it's weird. Number 12. Do you guys remember that leprechaun that you had to pull out of the tree during the Lost City quest? Well, in RuneScape Classic, there was actually a glitch where you could literally click the tree over and over and spawn multiple leprechauns at a time. Number 11. It's interesting to think that Lumbridge at one point in time didn't have a bank within the city at all, yet during the Battle of Lumbridge World Event, there was a total of seven banks within the city. The Dorgish Khan Bank, the Combat Academy Bank, the Thieves Guild Bank, the Culliner Romancer's Chest, the two God Camp Banks, and the bank at the very top of the castle. Number 10. So everyone knows that Ardoin is split in two by a great wall, right? Well, have you ever noticed that the separation is similar to the real-world Berlin Wall during the Cold War? It could also be a reference to the peace lines in Belfast, Northern Ireland, too. Number 9. Possibly further authenticating the last fact is that the name Ardoin may have been adopted from Ardoin, a district in Belfast, Northern Ireland. They're both pronounced the same way either way, too. Number 8. Brian O. Richard in the Rogue's Den is a reference to the actor Richard O'Brien's name, who used to host a popular UK TV program called The Crystal Maze. He often played a harmonica while contestants were doing the puzzles on the show. Brian O. Richard in RS alludes to this by asking you to search for his harmonica when you first speak to him. Yet harmonicas do not exist in RuneScape. Number 7. Silverlight used to be sold in the Legends Guild in RuneScape Classic, and this was the only way to reobtain the item at that time, but due to complaints about this, Silverlight was removed from the guild and was made obtainable by Sir Prison in Varrock later on. However, it can now only be retrieved from the RS3 NPC, Gideon Bede. 
Number 6. When the Abyssal Whip was first released with the Slayer skill in 2005, the special attack would have a 50% chance of you hitting your max hit on it, or either hitting a zero. This was later updated, being too overpowered, and changed to the special attack that drained run energy. Number 5. On the 18th of October in 2002, a preview was given about RuneScape 2 almost a year before the beta of it was actually released. The two screenshots you're seeing is what Andrew, within the news post, described as the new version of the camera angle of RuneScape 2. If you look in the pictures, RuneScape 2 was intended to be able to have a camera to a bird's eye view, as well as having an actual daytime sky background too. Number 4. Weddings actually used to be very popular within the world of RuneScape Classic. Here you can see even Paul Gower assuming the role as a priest for the ceremony. Number 3. Dragon Boots, whenever they were first released, had a typo in their name for the first few hours. They were known as Dragon Boost instead of Boots. Number 2. Whenever you talk to King Arthur, his chat head is different than how he actually looks. His chat head is a thin crown and a short brown beard, yet his NPC model has a long red beard and a thick crown. Number 1. Alright guys, check this out. It's super laggy. But what you're seeing right now is the only known footage of the official RuneScape 2 beta and how this game looked back when I started playing. I was very shocked to have find this. I'm sorry that the quality is so bad, but I posted a link to the description and the full video below if you want to watch it. Seems pretty cool. Thanks for watching everybody, and if you know what I should count down next, post in the comments and let's make it happen. Also, it took me a while to put this video together guys, so if you could just express to me how you feel about the video with a like or a dislike if you choose to, it would be insanely appreciated, and it really does help get these videos out there for more people to see. Also, a few of you have asked about the new support button on my channel, and you've been wondering why I put it up or what it's exactly for. So, I'm gonna tell you about it. Um, YouTube added a fan funding feature to YouTube channels that were eligible for it, and our channel was, guys. So, I'm just gonna mention it once in this video, and then I'll never mention it again. There's a thousand ways I could go about approaching you guys with this, and there's still going to be that select few of you that in return say, Oh, he's just doing it for the money, he's money hungry, he just does it for YouTube money. Which, I won't lie, is partially true. Before I explain to you why I just said what I said, just know that I don't want your sympathy or even your praise, really. I just want you guys to be able to understand why I'm mentioning it. I can't get a real job right now because I have to take care of my brother who has Down Syndrome and my mother works 12 hours a day to provide money for all of us. And I do YouTube as a way to bring money to the table for my family on the side. And honestly, it has really helped us out a lot here. If you guys want to see a picture of me and my family, here's one right here for you guys. Um, there's my mom, my brother, and my sister. Um, however, money is not the reason why I started YouTube, and it's definitely not the reason I continue it every single day. I do it because of you guys, and because I generally am so passionate about RuneScape, and I think you guys can tell that by the effort and time I put into these videos and the game itself. Like I said, if you want to donate, even the smallest contribution would help me out quite a bit, but hey, if you don't want to donate, obviously nobody has a gun to your head, you know what I'm saying? Uh, because I know there are people out there who are so much less fortunate than myself. Uh, if you don't donate, don't worry, I'm, I'm still going to make videos about the game that I love uh, with just as much effort as before. And once again, I feel like you guys are mature enough for me to be able to actually be one of those YouTubers who is open about discussing the whole money side of what I do with YouTube. And above all else, I'm still going to keep digging for amazing stuff about the game to share it all with you guys. We're almost at 27,000 subscribers and that's insane. Just a couple days ago, we were at 25,000. So once again, guys, thanks so much and I'll talk to you all very soon.